Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for tuning in and just a big thank you to each and every one of you for all the comments on yesterday's video, all the kind words about our new little arrival, Thea, into mine and Tasha's lives. It's been like just lovely to read through them and thank you so much. You guys are literally the best. Um, life is good and again, she's, she's napping now so I will get her on at some point so... Do keep an eye out as well today, later on on my Twitter. If I've got time to stream this evening, I definitely will, but it will depend on what's going on. So hopefully you guys understand. If not this week, we will get back into it next week. But as I said yesterday, we're kicking off with this team on the channel this week. So we did play it a couple of weeks ago. Had a little bit of a break because of things going on, but we're going to finish it up this week. And I am super ready to get into a new team next week. So if there are cores and things that you would like to see played that we haven't really featured too much of yet on the channel and you really got a burning desire to see them played then let me know down below in the comment section i'll make sure to feature them next week we had some great comments and suggestions yesterday but do keep them coming guys just to recap the team we've got the tapu Fini, the metagross the veltal we've got the hit on top now over the incineroar the groudon and the thunderous which has got the z move as always the team is down in the description below you can try it out take it away have a look at it and tweak it even if you like to change a few things for your own taste and if you do just let me know how you get on with it because it's a core I really do have a lot of love for and uh, if you have a lot of success with it I would love to hear about it but um, getting on to today's episode I guess we better just jump straight into it um, music is on everything looks fine so looking forward to it but yeah as I say I'm ready to kind of move into a new team next week better get the right screen on so we can see our rate and it's dropped a little bit hasn't it so we need to climb back up i'm a little bit sad because i felt like we had a nice bit of momentum going into uh the first week when we played this team and i really feel like this could push on to 1800s but we'll see how we get on for the rest of the week we've got rue as our first opponent so i'll jump straight over into team preview Right, Rue is running a team off. It looks great, actually. It's got the Mega Mawile there, which is going to be the Mega of the team, or you presume it would be. Then there are the Kyogre, the Tapu Lele, the Bronzong, the Jumpluff, and the Groudon. Now, Jumpluff is something I actually tested myself with this team before I came up with this this version that we're running now. Uh, it does get Chlorophyll. It is base 110 speed, so it's pretty fast. And especially under the sun, it's going to be outspeeding most things. It's got access to sleep powder as well, so you have to be very aware of that. Uh, tail, oh, it doesn't get Tailwind, actually. It gets Encore, it gets Rage Powder, it gets loads of different moves. And one of the moves I was testing out on Jump Luff, and if you guys would like to see that variant of the team at the end of the week, I am happy to play that. But that was Sapped Strength, and it was incredibly good, especially with the Focus Sash. A lot of fun to play around with. Um, okay, what are we going to do? We've got Trick Room here on my opponent's side of the field. We need to try and, and utilize Eveltal to stop that Bronzong for sure. Um, let's see. I think I might change things up a little bit here because we could bring Thunderous. It's good for the Taunt, the Fast Taunt, especially because the things that we want to Taunt are going to be on the uh, Flying or Levitating and the Bronzong and the Jump Luff. So I think I'll bring that. I do want to bring... Mm, do I want to bring him on top? I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm going to bring Tapu Fini, Eveltal, and Groudon. And then we should be locked in. And we'll get into this first one today. So as always, guys, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel and keep those comments coming. One of the things I forgot to ask about yesterday, we had the IC over the weekend. And I didn't ask. I would love to hear how you all got on, if you played in the IC over the weekend, how you finished, what teams you used, and how much fun you had in general. And, uh, of course, you're all that you have competed in this are going to get a nice tasty Tapu Fini for your troubles as well. And a big shout out as well. I need to... Someone messaged me on Twitter and said there was a, a shiny Tapu Fini event in Japan. So the guy we played yesterday, I, I was a bit sceptical on the, the shiny Tapu Fini. But he, obviously there has been an event over there. So that's how they got it. There's no hacking there. So I'm um, just a little bit too sceptical. And that's just my knowledge of uh, the shiny events over there not being a thing. But we are going to see the Groudon on the Jump Luff come out as a lead for my opponent. So um, now we can taunt the Jump Luff here for sure. Maybe one of the things we want to do, though, is just go for a Protect with Thunderous. Because I'd imagine that the, the Jump Luff out of everything here probably 
wants to protect, we'll probably see the Groudon go for an attack, try to remove that Thunderous from the field to get rid of that priority taunt. Um, and I'm just going to Icy Wind at this point just to try and slow everything down a little bit. And um, being a grass and flying type, Jump Bluff is four times a week to the Ice type. So it's going to take a lot of damage there. We're going to just see a sleep powder fired out and a fire punch and it is into that thunderous So we do get a free icy wind off here into my opponent. Tabu Finney on form hitting with both attacks here. So that's good. Doing some nice damage to both targets. Now you know we have to worry about a potential uh, fire punch coming out from the ground on here. So that's something we have to be a little bit aware of. Um, so we could bring in our own Groudon, um, it's not a bad shout, and we could just go for another Icy Wind here. I would expect we'll probably see another Fire Punch come out from the Groudon into our Thunderous to try and remove it, maybe a Sleep Powder as well. Um, whether or not my opponent's really that worried about the Taunt because they just went straight for that Sleep Powder, maybe there's a Mental Herb on there, so that's something you've got to think about and, and consider as well, because most of the time, if you haven't got the Mental Herb, you're kind of going to be worried about that Prankster Taunt. Um, especially to shut the jump up down, not allowed to really do very much. So we'll get our own ground on in, give ourselves a little bit more room for our type of finny to operate and just disrupt their side of the field. We're just slowing things down a little bit with these icy winds. And you know, after jump left's going to be in a really tight spot if it takes another one because it will go down to a following one after that. We're going to see the ground on my opponent's side switch out. Bronzong hit the field now, which is an interesting one. Um, but as long as we've got our terrain on the field, we're not too worried. Ah, we really needed that to hit. Uh, icy wind, not on point there. Um, the thing that we have to worry about this next turn, of course, is the Tapu Lele switching in um, and then the Jump Luff putting our Growl on to sleep. But does my opponent have um, the Kyogre in the back? That's what I would I would imagine. You've got Kyogre, you've got Growl on. So I don't imagine Tapu Lele coming to this, this matchup. The problem is, if we go for an eruption and the Kyogre comes in, not really doing very much um, and we've got a type of finny out on the field which is not something that we really want to have out on the field at this point I am going to click into eruption because we do want to try and get rid of this bronze on but because it's likely the Kyogre comes in I need to switch in for the ground on out so Tapu Finney is like the best thing in that situation and I'm going to bring Eveltal onto the field because Eveltal's just going to be able to pressure the bronze on it's got snarl to pressure the the Kyogre as well if it does come onto the field, which I'd imagine is likely what's going to happen now. So we'll see anyway. Uh, we do get our Misty Seed activated, so that's good for us. Uh, Rage Powder, okay. Well, we don't mind that at all because Eruption's going to be... I don't care about Rage Powder! Here we go. Hopefully it's enough to take both targets down. And that kind of indicates that maybe... Well, the Kyogre has to be in the back. You have to bring Kyogre against the Groudon team. And maybe you rely just on your Groudon, get your get your Trick Room up, get your Gravity up, and just start P-Blade and everything. Um, who knows, but we do remove both targets from the field, so that's, that's nice for us. Um, the Misty Terrain coming in, really big for us here, and we do see that Kyogre now hit the field. There's no Trick Room up on the field now, and you've got to imagine both these Primals are probably going to be a little bit slower um, than our Veltal, so... We are going to see the Kyogre actually activate the rain first. Is that because our sun's already up? Or is the Groudon actually going to be slower? Let's see. Let's see, let's see. There's a Primordial Sea. Yeah, so that's good. So we're not threatened by a Fire Punch from the Groudon, so we don't really care about that. Um, we'll bring in Tepra Finny, and we will start snarling with our Eveltal. And I think we're going to have pretty a pretty easy route now to kind of close this game up we just need to get rid of Kyogre and then the Groudon being slower potentially than our Groudon but Eveltal should be able to close this one up itself I feel at this point we do get the Snarl off into the Kyogre Stomping Tantrum into our Tapu Fini um, does actually really respectable damage doesn't it there um, and the Origin Pulse coming out hits both targets I'm um, not going to really worry our Veltal too much. Um, and I think, hmm, do we, what do we do? Do we just heal Pulse? Or, nah, Nature's Madness into the Kyogre here. And we'll just go for another Snarl as well. And this one should be quite a quick one. I, I looked back at yesterday's episode, it was crazy. I was like, I couldn't believe it was like over 40 minute episode. It was mad. I was like, 
When did that happen? I think it was because of the excitement of actually being back recording again after such a, a little break and such disruption in our lives that I was like just a little bit getting carried away and thinking, I'm just loving this. Let's just keep this carrying on forever. So we do see a thunder come out from the Kyogre. The Groudon does protect. Uh, we do survive that because of the, the minus two drop with the snarls there. Um, we are going to be able to get this Nature's Madness off into the Kyogre and put it in a, a nice place to get picked up and a couple of turns from maybe two more snarls. Um, the Groudon now in a prime position to get Natured Madness as well, and I'm just going to spam Snarl, there's no reason not to here. We're not in any danger of getting taken out at this point, unless we see a critical hit, Origin Pulse onto our Ivelta, but maybe even then we take that, I think, at this point, uh, with the Misty Seed boost that we've got. The, the Misty Terrain has subsided for now, um, but I don't feel like we need it for the rest of this match. And the thing what we need to just consider at the minute is keeping this rain up, because the Groudon, its only way to really hit Ivelta is... Um, is with that fire punch, and that's the only threatening thing that, that my opponent's got from that side of the field. The Kyogre's neutered, minus three now. Precipice Blade's gonna come out. Um, Tempe Finish should take this. Yeah. Uh, Origin Pulse. Will this take Finny down? I would say it probably does. No. Wow. Finny, Finny doing, doing all the work. Okay, now Evelto can probably clean this one up itself. Um, what we'll do, we'll just switch into Groudon and we will foul play the opposing Groudon. That should be enough to pick up the knockout there. And then the Kyogre's kind of locked into Ice Beam, if anything. And uh, Yveltal should be able to close this one up. And we might be able to squeak a 4 0 to kick us off today, which is going to be very good. Very entertaining game, though. And uh, nice to see something like Jump Love being utilized by a player. And, you know, Rue's got a really high rating as well. So he's been doing obviously very well with this team. Um, so. It's kind of nice to see. I think the Mawile would have maybe caused us a few more problems, but we haven't seen the inclusion of that in this game. So, um, be nice. It's one of those teams where you think, I'd love a best of three against this team, just to see how my opponent kind of reacts. If they bring the Mawile, which they're likely to, and see how we can get on against that. So, Thunder in the Sun does avoid, um, and we're going to be able to wrap this one up now with an Earth Part from our Groudon, and we will just follow this up with a foul play as well from our Velto. But this should be a nice way for us to kick off today. Um, and I keep thinking, I've got like, like I was saying yesterday, my brain feels a bit mush at the minute, and I feel like I've probably said this a million times, but suggestions for next week guys i'm going to put a poll up on the channel today so keep an eye out for that for ideas calls and things that you'd like to see played next week because like i said in yesterday's episode i'm really open now to just have a little bit of fun with the ultra series and uh, even though we can have a lot of fun with it there's still a lot of serious calls that we haven't really touched upon yet that we could have we could feature and things like that but i think it's a nice time to kind of start delving into a few more fun and maybe meme -y, quirky ideas that I've probably been sitting on to play a little bit more serious stuff on the channel with recently. Um, I'll jump over to our score screen so you can see what our rating is and I better choose some music. Um, Max and Archie, we never have this one do we? So we'll, we'll pick this one and uh, we'll see how we get on. But yes, do let me know in the comments about your IC run, how you got on in that. I'd love to hear, especially because I didn't play in it. So it feels nice to just have some feedback from you guys if you did play it and see how you got on. But we've got our next opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight over into this one. And it is going to be an X-Ray team for our next one today. We've got the Xerneas, we've got the Rayquaza, we've got Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Landorus, and Stack Attacker. So a pretty standard looking X-Ray team. Um, maybe the Stack Attacker is the one thing that we don't see in there too commonly, but um, still something that can do a lot of work. It, this is a great, a great matchup for Metagross. We still got to be careful around the Xerneas for sure. Um, I'm just going to double check because I'm not like oh fair with this type of thing. We do have haze on it. No, we don't have haze on it. We don't have haze, so I need to be a little bit careful around that. I mean, Thunderous is decent here. Really threatens the Landorus for sure. Metagross is just incredible in this matchup. I think I'm going to go Metagross, hit him on top, an old lead from VGC. Oh, where are we going? VGC 12. Uh, 2012, I think it was popular back then. It might have even been before that, maybe 2009. Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure my age now. Okay. 
We do probably want um, Groudon and maybe Tapu Fini as well for the light screen support. Although I do really like Thunderous here. Thunderous is probably maybe a better one to bring. Um, I'm going to bring Thunderous here, actually, yeah, and just leave Tapu Fini on the sidelines. I want. I say I want. I want a way for us to hit Tapu Fini super hard, and we can do that with Thunderous, with the Z-move especially there, you know, we can do a lot of damage to it, so I think just having that there. It's a nice switch in as well if the Landorus is out in the field, because um, they're not bringing Yveltal to this match. Um, Yveltal's going to struggle a lot in this matchup. We've got the white screen. What's going on? Here we go. We're getting into the battle. Uh, get a little bit of head up and it all kicks in. Um, yeah, Veltel's going to find it hard here. Stack attack I'm not going to really enjoy. is going to be doing big damage to it over and over again. Xerneas is uh, Xerneas, so, you know, uh, we're going to see Rayquaza and Stack attack come out for my opponent here, um, which isn't too bad at all. We have to worry about the Rayquaza if it's got Earth Power, of course. It, it will... It will threaten our, um, our good old Metagross, but you know, I hit him on top, putting a lot of pressure onto the stack attacker here. We could, uh, we could surely go for a close combat into that, but then we got to worry about the Rayquaza throwing out one of these uh, Dragon Ascents as well, which could be a little bit problematic for us. Um, kind of just want to stomp and tantrum into the stack attacker here, if I'm really honest. Um, the only thing that really like, we could see Landorus come in. Definitely could. I'm going to switch out him on top and I think take this opportunity to get to get Thunderous onto the field um, yeah requires minus one at the minute Dragon Ascent's not going to do too much to us so we'll be able to take that with Thunderous I think the worst case scenario is going to be the requires are having maybe overheat or earth power they're definitely options that it could it could go for and threaten our mega we're going to see the, the requires a mega evolve here so it's going to burst out into mega requires Probably one of the, the strongest restrictive Pokemon we've got in this format. There's a Delta Stream. We all love to see. And uh, we'll see what my opponent goes for here. Uh, after we Mega Evolve, of course, with our lovely Metagross. I'm still a bit undecided on Metagross. I love it so much, but there's a part of me that's like, hmm, I'm just not, not massively convinced by it. I'm going to see a Stomp in. We'll be double powered next turn, so we've got that going for us. And a Dragon Ascent, which is going to be fired out from this Ray into our Thunderous. Like I say, minus one. We should take this a little bit. I mean, still does ridiculous damage, doesn't it? It really does. It does so much damage. This is such a crazy move. Like I say, the Stomp and Tantrum is going to do a bit more damage this next turn. So I don't really want Thunderous to go down here. Uh, and I don't really want to switch him on top into Dragon Ascent either. Um, I'm just going to protect Thunderous. I'm going to try and get a Stomp and Tantrum into this stack attacker. If it's got the Shooker Berry, it's not really going to... Mm, it'll be close. I think we probably get the KO. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Rick was going to withdraw, so we could have got a, a turn off with our, our Thunderous here. Landra's going to switch in. It is going to try and get the Intimidate um, onto our Mega Metagross. I wonder if we see a Trick Room set up here. Be very interesting. Thunder is just protecting here. We don't want to take a rock slide either. That's the other thing. Um, we do get this. Uh, there's the Shooker. Double power stomping though. It'll be interesting to see what the damage is like. Minus one. Man. Weak. Stone Edge into Thunderous. Okay. So that's. I, I think that's fine. Um. Phew. I do want to. I do want to ice punch into the the Landorus here for sure, um, and we don't want to stick around for a Stone Edge, but I don't want to take a Z move either. That's the that's the other thing. Um, I'm just gonna protect Metagross. I'm gonna switch into him on top here, and just preserve Thunderous for later on. So at least we know three of my opponent's four Pokemon. Uh, I would imagine the Xerneas is the last one for sure. Um, but getting top in and intimidated, we're not threatened by Dragon Ascent either. We've got a, a pretty nice option to go for a, um, a close combat into the stack attack at the next turn. But I imagine we probably force the stack attacker out if it does stick around, which it is going to hear as we just protect with Metagross this turn. We're going to see the lander is now fire off that Z move. It's going to be into the Metagross, trying to remove that from the field. But minus one behind the protect, it's not going to be doing too much. So we're going to be in decent shape. We've also got Wide Guard kind of helping us out going into this next turn. 
and protect us from an earthquake. And it, you, you know, the, the one thing that I would say that we're going to probably see this next turn is going to be earthquake stack switch out into Rayquaza uh, for sure. So, yep, there we go. There's the Z move. Um, and there's a the Stone Edge. Yep, into top, but able to take that because we resist it like a champ. Um, yeah, the, the thing is, though. Uh, the Rayquaza comes in, Delta Stream gets activated, we wide guard for sure, yeah that's nice, um, but we're not in the best of position going into the next turn, because we really want to intimidate that uh, Rayquaza. And then one of the things we could potentially do is um, go for the, hmm, I just don't want Metacross taking too much damage, that's the thing, like I'm going to Ice Punch Delandris, I think I'll probably go for... Could I just go for the Thunderous switch in and then go close combat and just get some damage onto the stack attacker? If it stays in, but it's going to be the Rayquaza, we'll break a potential Sash if it does switch out. I'd imagine that's what we're going to see. So there's a Metagross going out. It's just to kind of cover the Earthquake here. Um, and we reset that Intimidate drop as well. There's the stacker going out for the Ray. The worst thing is, I just kind of really want to have um, Intimidate onto the Rayquaza. Yeah, there's the earthquake. Hit him on top, we'll be able to take it. Yeah, and this is all about just breaking that that sash there. Okay. I think that the problem is now that Thunderous is definitely in Dragon Ascent range from the Frozen Rayquaza, which is a little bit awkward. Um. Okay, we'll bring... We'll take... We'll protect Thunderous. We'll bring... Hmm. Do I want to bring Metagross in? That's the problem. Hmm. It's just taking an Earthquake, which is not really ideal. Um, are we better off sacking him on top as well? Is that the other thing? I don't really think so, because I think we need the Intimidate support. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll switch him on top out. I think... I think Metagross can take an Earthquake. Minus one Earthquake. It's not going to be ideal, but we'll be able to take it for sure. We might see the Landris switch out. You never know. I might go for a Rock Slide. Maybe. I'll just protect Thunderous though. It's extreme speed. And... Earthquake. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. What's Metagross going to do from this? Okay, we t I mean, we take that a little bit better than what I thought we would. Um, we can definitely get uh, Groudon in now. And Ice Punch the Landorus. Or we l Ice Punch the Rayquaza. Um, hmm... I'll Ice Punch the Landorus and bring Groudon in and hope we see the Rayquaza either protect or, or go for an extreme speed into the, the Thunderous. If we see a Dragon Ascent into Metagross, might, this might be a little bit too much. I just want to remove the Delta Stream, get rid of the Landorus. It's putting a lot of pressure on everything on our side of the field right now. And it kind of makes me think, mm, the Velto, Finny would have been really useful here. Yeah, but we haven't got them so we can't think about that right now we've got to think about keep our mind on the on the game so we are going to see stream speed into the metagross thankfully we are able to take that we should be able to remove the landorus from the field now problem is here if the xerneas comes in because it is going to be able to get boosted up um it's not going to be ideal and we don't have any speed control on our side of the field yeah is the problem, I think. The Zen. Hmm. And if it gets boosted up, Metagross is in no position. To, and then we haven't got Thunderous out in the field to stop that. To stop the, uh... Okay. We've got a Precipice Blades, I think. And... Do we get him on top back in? 
not really going to do too much though, that's the thing. Like, as Xerneas gets boosted up here, we can't really deal with the Rayquaza. Because it's just going to... Yeah, it's just going to extreme speed the Metagross. Because it has to cover that slot. It really has to. Um... Mm. I'm just going to Iron Head. Uh, I think we're protecting. We'll run out of time. I'm faffing around too much. It's not good. <laughs> oh, I hear this. Yeah. Okay, the Rayquaza. This is why the Iron Head would have been the better call here. Just iron if we were just a, a fraction quicker. Okay. Well, this is fine. But the problem is we probably take the stacker down unless Precipice Blades misses, which is the one time you want it to miss is now. Ground on! Okay. The only other option there was switching Groudon out to him on top, and then we got the fake out Iron Head this turn. Hmm. Maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way for us to do this. I don't know. Can, a min can Metagross take minus one extreme speed? I don't know from this range. And Iron Head surely not going to take down the Xerneas, though. Um. But we'll try and get we'll we'll get Groudon out of here. We'll get him on top in. We'll try and get an Intimidate onto that, and we'll try and go for an Iron Head into the Xerneas, and hope my opponent goes for an Extreme Speed into the Metagross and not a Dragon Ascent. Like at this point, I would just be banking. I would bank on Dragon Ascending into that Metagross just to make sure I get rid of it. None of the protect the last turn. I wouldn't be faffing around with Extreme Speed. I would just do it and Geomancy. So that's what I totally expect to see my opponent go for here. Oh, it's gonna go for it. It is actually enough to get it, so, I mean... And there's the Geo, which we can't do anything about. And I think that's one of the things about having the Finny with light screen, you know? If you've got, if you've got Haze on there, like we kind of played all season, it makes it a lot easier of a choice to bring in this matchup, because you think the Rayquaza has probably got Sword Stance if it's not Banded, which I kind of think this one is. Um, is Thunder is going to be able to do anything here? I really don't think it is. Um, I mean, the only thing we could potentially do is bring Thunderous in. Say that the Xerneas is going to protect this turn around the fake out. Bring Groudon in. Snipe. The Rayquaza with Hidden Power Ice. And then try it. And then try and work down. It's all banking on that Xerneas protecting here. It really is. And if I was my opponent, I probably wouldn't protect here. I'd probably just attack. Because I'm not really too threatened right now. But we'll see, we'll see. Nah, no protect. Oof. Even minus one extreme speed takes us down. That's just crazy. Okay. I mean, we've got wide guard. We've got wide guard. This is not really going to help us too much, is it? We're going to need some big precipice blades damage then. And we can't deal with the Rayquaza at the same time. Oh, it's a little bit sad, but um, I think this is the thing with Metagross is it's like in hindsight on paper it looks amazing, but like when you're actually in a game versus something like Rayquaza which just hits you so hard, it makes it so difficult. Um, we'll not reveal, we'll not reveal it yet. We'll try and get a fake out into the Xerneas and a Precipice Blades. This is where you protect though, 100%. But we've not really got a way to deal with the Rayquaza either. I mean, it's locked into Extreme Speed. Yeah, there's the Protect, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think just the constant damage. I mean, like, Banded Rayquaza, which this is, it just does so much damage. And it's, like, it's so difficult to get around. Um, why do we have to go Precipice Blaze and we have to go Wide Guard? Because... We're definitely going to see... I mean, they might read through this. And I think, like, it's just... It's not able to take the hits like you needed to. And 
to be honest as well, to get the guaranteed one hit KO on just your standard 4 HP Xerneas, you need Meteor Mash and you need a lot of investment as well, which takes away any sort of room for um, defensive investment there. So I think it really does limit you. There's a Dazzling Gleam. So we do get a Precipice Blades off. It does hit. We need like crit, crit, crit. I mean, yeah, it's, it's EV to take three, so now we protect, now we go close combat. Because the Moonblasts are coming out. My opponent can be really cheeky and go for a Moonblast into the him on top now and just extreme speed the guard on. Going into the top. Moonblast, yeah, we're going to get a hit, a close combat off. Just, yeah, I mean, Moonblast, there's no way we get around the Moonblast now, that's the thing. Um, we can get a double protect for sure, but then <laughs> Extreme Speed just takes us down. Let's just forfeit gracefully, and let's go help in hand. Come on top, let's do it. But this is what I mean about Metagross, it's just, I, I feel like it's so close to being there and, and being the, the Pokemon that we want it to against this core, but I think just requires it being so powerful. And then you got variants with Earth Power and things like that, which cover it even better. Just makes it so difficult to get around. And you're not really able to go toe to toe with a boosted Xerneas, which you kind of want your Steel type to be able to do. And I think that's a big drawback for it, where like Stack Attacker does that reasonably well. You've still got to play around Xerneas carefully with Stack Attacker, but Stack Attacker is built to do that a lot better than Metagross. And you've got Speed Control there, which does help that out, which Metagross doesn't. Um, substitute Metagross is an interesting one. Maybe you could try that by the end of the week, for sure. But, very good game to my opponent. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, girl, guys. It's been really a lot of fun playing. I'm just over the 30-minute mark, so keeping it back to time. And uh, we'll be back with more more Eveldon action tomorrow. So do stay tuned for that. Thank you once again. I look forward to reading your comments about IC, about teams you'd like to see next week. And make sure you do check out that poll. But uh, have a great day. And I will catch you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.